The Little Mermaid Quest for the Purple Pearl. Wow! Voice wailed in the dressing room of King Triton's underwater castle. Swimming by, Ariel stopped short. She knew that voice. It was her sister, Adelia, and she sounded upset. Ariel swam closer and peeked into the room. Adalia wasn't alone. Aquaria, another sister, was with her. You can't let anyone see you. You have a bad case of the bubbles, Aquita was saying to Adela. It's from eating too much sugared seaweed. The bubbles? Adela asked. She turned and Ariel gasped. Adela's face was covered with pink and green polka dots. Daddy warned me not to eat too much seaweed, Adela said. If he sees me like this, he'll be in, I'll be in so much trouble. She hiccuped and pink and green bubbles floated up. Aquadia found, frowned. Bubbles are serious. There is a cure, but it's almost impossible to find. Pearl lotion made from a purple pearl. They grow inside triple banded sea oysters. Adela whimpered. Well, don't those oysters eat merfolk? Sometimes, Aquada admitted. Ariel bit her lip. Poor Adela. She needed help. Later in her treasure grotto, Ariel told Flounder she was going to find a purple pearl. What are you going to... You're going to do what? Flounder exclaimed. But the only place to get one is from the triple banded sea oyster. And they lived in Blackbeard's Trench. That meant you'll have to cross the barbed sea kelp forest. Ariel shrugged. Adela needs help. I can't tell them I'm going because they'd worry. But someone has to get the cure. Besides, I've been in kelp forest before. Not like this one, Flounder said. This kelp is huge. He spun in a circle. There's a riptide. Each strand of sea kelp is covered in thorns. And the spaces in between them are tiny. Don't be such a guppy, Ariel said. She swung her collecting sack over her shoulder. Are you coming? Flounder didn't like being called a guppy. So together, he and Ariel headed off to find the purple pearl. The ocean path leading to the kelp forest was dark and very quiet. Even though Ariel had told Flounder not to be afraid, she started to get cold fins herself as they swam along. Up ahead was the barbed sea kelp forest. Ariel gulped. Everything Flounder had said was true. A wild riptide raced through the kelp. The spaces between the strands were barely wide enough for a small mermaid like herself to fit through. But the worst part was the thorns. Each one was six inches long. Even though she was scared, Ariel thought Adela's polka dotted face, she had to help her sister. With a flip of her fins, she entered the kelp forest. Carefully, she slid between two strands. There, that wasn't so bad. She wove between three more strands. No thorns touched her. She could do this. Let me go ahead, Flounder said, trying to be brave. I'm smaller than you. Good thinking, Ariel said. She followed his blue tail. Was it her imagination or were the strands now even closer together? This way, Flounder called. Ariel swam after him. A thorn scratched her arm. Flounder zipped through another gap, but it was too tight for Ariel. Flounder, I can't get through, she cried. His little face appeared in the gap. I'll help. He held the kelp aside with his mouth. But there still wasn't enough space. Ariel felt the pull of the riptide behind her. The current was growing stronger. As Ariel watched the riptide force the kelp strands apart. This gave her an idea. What if she rode the riptide like a dolphin in the surf past the thorns? Watch out, Flander, she called. I'm coming through. At just the right moment, Ariel launched herself into the rushing water. The current carried her straight through a gap in the kelp. Not a single thorn scratched her. On the other side, Ariel trembled ahead, head over tail before grabbing onto an anchor of a shipwreck to stop herself. She pushed the hair out of her eyes. 
That was fun, she cried. They didn't have time to waste. Ariel needed to get that pearl and get back to her sister. The pair swam until a giant crack split the seabed in front of them. Blackbeard's trench, Flounder whispered. Ariel inched up to the edge and peered down. Far below her, the trench was lit by what looked like a golden glow. Here goes, Ariel said, taking a deep breath. They swam deeper and deeper and deeper. Finally, they reached the very bottom of Blackbeard's trench. All around them, triple-banded sea oysters were scattered like flowers in a strange underwater garden. Their shells were open, and nestled inside each was a shimmering, glowing pearl. They don't look very scary, do they, Ariel? Flounder asked. Ariel shook her head. In fact, the triple-banded sea oysters were some of the prettiest creatures I ever seen. It was hard to believe that they would ever eat a mermaid. Maybe it's just a myth, Ariel said. I'll just swim in and... No! Flounder grabbed Ariel's arm and pulled her back. We've got to be sure. He took a branch of driftwood in his mouth and tossed it into the closest oyster shell. Snap! The shell chomped the driftwood in half. Ariel sighed. How was she going to get one of the pearls to cure her sister without getting hurt? Maybe there was something to her collect in her collecting sack that would help. She emptied it out. Inside found a dingle hopper, two gizmos, and a snarfle blast. Tucked in the corner of the bag was a long feather with a pony tip. Her friend Scuttle had called it a mimble doodle. That's no help, Flanders said. We need a hook, or a long rope, or something. But a gleam had come into Ariel's eyes. She picked up the feather. Don't be so sure, she said. Ariel tried the feather, tied the feather to the end of a stick using some seaweed. She snuck close to one of the oysters. Then she ran the feather gently across its pink inside. She braced herself for the shell to snap shut, but instead the oyster shuddered. It shook. It went, ah, ah. Ariel dropped the feather and backed away. Ah, choo! With a mighty sneeze, the purple pearl shot out of the oyster's mouth and straight into Ariel's hands. Flounder did a backflip. Bullseye, he yelled. What does that mean? Ariel asked, confused. The fish shrugged. I don't know. I heard Scuttle say it once. Together, they swam out of Blackbeard's trench and rode the riptide back across the barbed sea kelp forest. The ocean was still dark and quiet, but the glow from the pearl lit their way. Adela, Adela, I got it! Arrow called as she swam to the mermaid's dressing room. Adela and Aquata were brushing their hair in front of the mirrors. Got what, dear? Adela asked. She turned around and Adela's face was completely clear. You're cured! Arrow exclaimed. But how? I overheard you. And Aquata towing, talking about the bubbles. Aquata laughed. Oh, bubbles go away on their own, she said with a wave of her hand. I was just pulling Adela's fin with the story about the purple pearl lotion. You didn't believe it too, did you? Flounder's jaw dropped. But Ariel quickly smiled. Oh, me? Believe that story? Of course not. She hid the, her glowing collecting bag behind her back and quickly swam out of the room. Later, Ariel slid the beautiful pearl out of the collecting sack. It shimmered brightly. She winked at Flounder. It would have been a shame to turn it into lotion anyway, she said. And I know a much better place for it than a bottle. Flounder grinned. That meant there was going to be a very special addition to Ariel's treasure grotto. The end. <laughs>